a season of declarations for the presidential race ahead of next year's elections. A number of aspirants have joined the race on various political platforms. There had been a lot of speculations and moves in the last year by many politicians across the political divide about next year's presidential election. But it took the declaration of All Progressives Congress APC national leader Asiwajibola Tinibu to signal that the much-awaited electoral contest have begun in earnest. 24 hours after Tinubu's declaration, Eboin State's Governor Dave Umahi also threw his hat into the ring, saying he wants to replicate his progressive efforts in the southeast state at the national level. Like the former Lagos State Governor Umahi, a chieftain of the APC made the announcement after meeting with President Buhari and intimating him on his plan to run for the office. Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello joined the bandwagon when he declared his intention to contest on the platform of the ruling party. Chief Whip of the Senate, Senator Ojuz Okalu, has also declared that he would run if the APC ticket is zoned to the southeast. Aside from aspirants within the major parties, there are also indications that many Nigerians are interested in the race on the platform of other parties. Two of such aspirants have formally declared their intention to run. Hello and welcome to the program State of the Union. I am Mariam Sakari. Now, Against this backdrop, one would ask, what should Nigerians look for in choosing the next leader for the country? Here is the National Chairman of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, Dr. Olu Agunlui, a Nigerian politician who is a former Minister of Power and still and also former Minister of State for Defense, Navy. In 2016, he joined the Social Democratic Party and became a candidate for governor of Ondo State. Agunloe has previously been a member of the People's Democratic Party and the Action Congress of Nigeria. Let's listen to what he has to say. First, we need Nigerians to understand that when you are faced with a situation of selecting between the deep blue sea and the devil, it shows that you are in trouble either way. When a person is faced with a selection of choice between the fire and the fry pan, it also shows there is a problem. If anyone is faced with what they call the devil you know is better than the angel you do not know. So you are now forced to choose between devil number one and devil number two. Okay, it's a statement of crisis. Two, Nigeria must also understand that in the last 23 years, we have two governments, APC, PDP. And they have done their best. PDP ruled for 16 years and put in its best into what they did. APC has ruled for maybe six and a half, seven years. And by the time we get to 2023, we'll have ruled for eight years. APC had also done its best. They say so every time. You do not need only Lai Mohammed to tell you. All of them are telling us that. But Nigeria must understand something, that what we have is not the best that we desire. What we have in all sectors across, either in education or in healthcare sector or in security or in sports, they are not what we desire. They are not what we desire, okay? They are not where we want to be. 
So the scorecard of these two parties is less than desired. So it, it, it is not, and I don't think we want to go this time now and be condemning and saying this or so, it's not. What we are saying is that what we have on ground is not good. For instance, our young people that form 75% of the uh, population, the median age in Nigeria is 19, but the young people are more going into restlessness, into drugs, into crime, and more and more of them are committing suicide. That shows you something is wrong. So what do we expect? We expect to have what we call a new model, something new, something that departs from the previous. We must start to do things in a different way. We must start to look at Nigeria to come up in a different shape. Maybe they call it re-engineering, maybe they call it restructuring, re-whatever they say, we need a remodeling. Okay? People are coming out, and incidentally, we have the old, the usual, and the absolutely new, some of them completely naive, in quote. Okay? So, Nigerians will start to look broadly. We do not wish to go to this route anymore. Besides, it may be the last chance for Nigeria to be able to take a decision to remodel itself, come up with a new, brand new model, not based on the old ways. We have people who are below 40 coming out. We have people who are below 50 or about 50 coming out, just as we have people who are above 70 and they say some of them are above 80, but pretend as if they are 70. But those times should go away and give life to the new. Then if you are going to look at who the candidate must be, we must look at three C's. One, he has to be completely competent. He has to be a competent person. Two, he must be a credible person. Okay? Because it's not sufficient to be only be competent. He must be competent and be credible. Then he must be compassionate. Nigerian leaders have not been compassionate. Nigerian leaders at the state level, at the world level, at all the level, have been very vicious and callous. And that's what explains why they are corrupt. Because once you don't do things correctly, you need to do, get some forces to allow you to continue to perpetuate, and corruption is the tool in your hand. So Nigerians must start to look away from the old ones and look at the new things and a new remodeling. Do we have the time between now and general election to have any form of dialogue or re restructuring for people to come together and dialogue? Absolutely no. And we're not asking for that. Okay? If in 16 years one party could not do so, in eight years one party could not do so, no magic will make this happen uh, in one year. Okay? We are just saying that in the new things that will come, what are we going to be looking at? We must look at a new country. And the ingredients are there. The most famous ones is insecurity. You can't go from Kaduna to Abuja, even in the uh, train. Okay? But there are other things that show you that we must shift call and agitations for self-determination. Human beings don't ask for self-determination like we did in Nigeria in the 50s that became a big thing when we now got independence. 
okay, in 1960. So when people start to call for self-determination, it's an explanation that there's huge injustice. People are no longer happy. So you, where you were staying before that you felt happy, you said, no, let us move out. That is a statement to show Nigeria is not doing well. And what we are saying is that when we move from here in 2023, okay, we must move towards a new model. Okay? It's not as if people are coming out now, they want to campaign. Okay? We must select one of them who will be able to remodel Nigeria. We cannot select one of them who had been there perpetuating this for the last 23 years. He won't do anything. He will only go in the same old way. There's nothing. So it, it, we need a new wine in a new wine scheme. Stakeholders have expressed concern over the increase in campaign spending ceiling proposed in the Electoral Act Amendment Bill ahead of the 2023 general elections. The stakeholders at a high-level policy roundtable on political campaign finance expressed concern that the high cost of campaign spending ceiling and election expenses might exclude potentially good candidates. This is the reaction of the SDP chairman on some of the concerns raised by the stakeholders. Well, money politics is everywhere in the world. Money politics is every. Uh, program that you implement and in politics there are two two monies okay number one money really legitimate money is the money that you need to spend you have to spend if your constituency is Nigeria you will have to go around to all the states it will cost you money even if you decide to go trekking, is to have to carry food along, otherwise you will collapse. So we are going to talk to people on radio. We are going to print posters. We are going to do. Uh, we are going to ask people to come to a meeting. That is set one money, but that is not what anybody is complaining about in Nigeria. Okay, you have it, you use it. You don't have it, you just sit down. Then you can get that money from your savings, you can get it from your financial inheritance, you can get it from your friends contributing for money for you. In America, people get the money by paying $20 to raise the money. Okay? Money number two is the corruption money. You are obliged to pay money to get this done. You are obliged to pay money to get this done. Okay? And that's quantum of money is almost four times more than the legitimate money. Okay? So, but we think that uh, in this 2023, the cost will go down for the following reasons. One, INEC had made it more difficult, okay, for things to be tampered with, and that means that politicians will spend less money to make sure that they don't tamper with their votes or less money to try to tamper with votes. Okay? Because the, with the new rules, okay, uh, then security of people snatching votes and uh, thumbprinting repeatedly would not be, would not, would not add any value under the new INEC uh, rules because of a bimodal uh, recognition test for accreditation. So if you carry the ballot box and you go and stuff it, it's a waste of time. So people will know this. The fact that uh, from ECAA will be recorded and transmitted at the polling station shows that all we need is collate those things together and then we have the results, whatever INET is going to say. Okay? So pursuing votes to coalition centers in the world or in the local government where they may change it and so on, those one will be off, all right? And because those kind of transparency have been put there, the tendency to reserve money to bribe INEC will be reduced. 
Because people now know that if you go to give your money to one INEC agent, you have just lost your money. Okay? Uh, also, because there is no incumbency wanting to perpetuate itself at the federal, okay, elections will not be more of do or die. Okay? It will be do and win. Okay? Also, the money number one, I do hope and I do expect that more people now realize that we put in, uh, should I say vagabond? Okay, let's put some words that are more polite. We put in people who are not very, very uh, sensitive to our, our needs and our, our yearning. We put in more politicians that are more ruthless into the place. We put in people who come in to pay us 2,000 for our vote or 4,000 for our vote. We drink the gari of it for the next four years. I think more people seem to have known that. I also think that the victims, number one victim, the young people, they're the ones who are not employed. They're the ones who have never taken a previous employment. Okay, for me, I would say X this, X that, and so on. So even on the on the X's that I have been, former this, former that, I sleep over it and uh, I wake up again. But they haven't had anything. And they do not have the kind of privilege and the situation that I had at the age of 25, okay? So, and they must know that this is the last chance we will not go after collecting 2,000 naira. Then besides, we can put one of our own there. So why do we go to ask him to pay all 2,000 naira? They have always done volunteers' job for the hawks and the vultures. It is now time to do volunteer work for themselves. Moving on now to another issue. Apart from the 40 billion naira annual budget, INEC wants 305 billion naira to conduct 2023 elections. INEC chairman Mahmoud Yakubu said the proposed 305 billion naira is different from the 40 billion yearly budget of the electoral body. The request by INEC has elicited reactions from civil society organizations, but for the SDP chairman, he thinks the amount is inadequate. Let me say something about my own bias. It's very interesting, but I can almost say that maybe this is the first time that I was face to face with uh, some INEC because as chairman, as national chairman of SDP, we go to some meetings with INEC on a quarterly basis, and I must have taken four of that now or so. And then I found this man called Mahmoud, eh? Professor Mahmoud. Apparently, I think he's a professor of history or something. But astute Malaga, single-minded achiever, he just wants results. He wants to do things well, okay? And some of the innovations that they have brought in are marvelous. The figures that you refer to, they are lower. In truth, what we are seeing is that I like under this uh, Mahmoud man is spending less money to achieve more and to set a legacy that has never been set up before. In 2011, INEC asked for 112 billion naira. That was about 1.5 billion dollars at that time. And do not ask me what they did with the money. Do not tell me what it was at that time. Okay, things were worse. Nothing was achieved. You went into a police station and the whole list there is not any of us who are waiting there. They say, oh, sorry, we have taken your list. It's in another place. Okay? In 2023 election, INEC is asking for 305 billion. Apparently, that is only. $600 million, less than half of what they got before. But what are they doing? 
they are having full accreditation, vote, accredit, vote, and see your results, transmit your results, okay? They are giving, I wish I could contest election at this time. I think I'm too old to do that, so I gave it up. But this is a time for young people to contest. So you know that this is also time for people to cast their votes. Because INEC has made sure that your votes will count and your votes will be counted. We didn't have that before. So really, the 305 billion is uh, nothing. And it's, you, you see people now driving uh, Rolls Royce, driving, uh, I understand, in one of the states. Somebody bought a one Rolls Royce for his girlfriend in uh, Kogi State. Can you understand that? Okay? So somebody's already spending 305 billion just to do burial of his mother's, uh, uh, burial of his mother who had died and he does not know what is going on in the earth. So we, we think that this is a moderate and to the value, the benefit of it is more than what it looks like on the surface. Talking about his party, the SDP chairman says as the nation prepares for general elections, he is confident that his party will win more seats. Let me say something about SDP. SDP is one party that is not shy or afraid or worried about saying we have ideology. We are saying we have principles, we have objectives, we have ideology. We are social democrats and we believe in principles of social justice. We have a manifesto that says that and we are taken by it. Two, SDP is in everywhere of the 774 uh, local governments and you go to the north or to the south, the ricochets of MKO Abiola, the SDP that won the other election, and so on, they sit there. You go to Adamawa, for instance, or go to Jigawa, and you sing Okebi, you sing the old SDP song, and people come out. SDP is everywhere. The structure of SDP is everywhere. But SDP is not as rich as the other party. And the reason is very clear, okay? You use different money to run the party and so on. We don't have that. We don't generate money to run the party by ourselves. Then SDP has a very strong brand, the horse, the white horse. The horse, the white horse by itself portends credibility, integrity, and strength. And it is across the culture, so people know it. So uh, ordinarily, we have uh, people who want SDP across Nigeria. And then in the last election, we won in River State, we won in uh, Nasarawa State, we won in FCT, we won in uh, Ondo, we won, but we had a situation where those who won on our platform were also lured to go to join the so-called ruling party, okay? But of course, it becomes clear now that the ruling parties became the ruining party. They're the parties that ruin not just the states, but ruin Nigeria by itself, okay? Then we are putting structures and controls to make sure that this will not happen again. And that we are opening our doors wide to allow people to come in, especially young people and women, and not only opening our doors, we are opening our mindset. Because when you come in, we have to shift for you to uh, occupy position. As we speak to you now, we have a probability of 80% of our position to give to people who are just coming. So, but of course, we are also in uh, talks of alliance with other parties. Uh, the, the details of that will come out later. But we are not in any merger. We are not in any form ready to merge with other party and lose our identity. 
we are not ready to change our logo, we are not ready to change our name, but we are ready to do an alliance under a principle that is well set out. And that has been Dr. Olu Agunlue, the National Chairman of the Social Democratic Party. It's time now for a short break. When we return, we will be looking at the overwhelming cases of young Nigerians who are involved in get-rich-quick syndrome and the unpleasant things they do to achieve that. Welcome back. In case you're just joining in, you are watching the program State of the Union and I am Mariam Zakari. In the wake of several heinous incidents where some Nigerian teenagers are overwhelmed by the Get Rich Quick Syndrome, thereby engaging in ritual killings and other crimes, Senator representing Enugu North Senatorial District, Chukuka Otazi, blamed parents and guardians for failing in their responsibilities to bring up their children and wards uprightly, as well as the dwindling value system in the country. When you have issues of this nature, like you just uh, introduced here, you know, if you are a careful observer and uh, uh, you you have you have a kind of a, the whole world view of developments around this country and beyond. You know that we should not be addressing the issue of effects. You should rather look for the causes. You know because the effect, the, the, the what we have seen is the outcome of the uh, behavioral changes in the whole world. And especially in Nigeria here, in the north, all parts of the country. So, instead of looking at the effect, I would rather want to look at the cause. The cause of all these issues today with all of us is here, is that nobody is serious about the way we bring up our children. We have untrained parents, managing, having in custody of children that are coming out. How can you, if you have untrained parents, a mother that is not trained, well brought up, you have a father that is not well brought up, but they are father and mother, and then they have children. What value orientation do these people have? Do they know God? How, the processes they went through in life. You know, so you check all those things. So when you now come back, you discover that in Nigeria, yeah, before, uh, during the colonial administration and uh, all that, then uh, towards the independence, the missionaries took charge of our schools. You know, you, you, if you come to a school, primary school, some of us uh, went through such. You, after going, after doing your morning, uh, after doing your uh, uh, lessons, morning till one o'clock or two, you dismiss. In the evening, you'll come back for catechism, for moral training and all that. Before children, children uh, women, young women that are of marriageable age will come up. They have, uh, they have their, uh, their, their, uh, their, uh, their, uh, their, their mentors, you know, where they send such people to these uh, mothers, such big homes. From there, they learn how to, they learn how to do domestic work, how to do bread how to know how to cook, how to, you see children well brought up. They know God. They, the children, the women that are going to be married, they also learn how the skills, how to even manage their home, how to even to provide for the children. Today, what is happening? You will now say that you remove education from the missionaries, you know, and all that. They have come, we are, we are, we are facing what the consequences of our actions. That's just it. Not until we go back and return the way we used to do and get things done, we will be in, in real serious danger. You know, it's a, a, a lot, I'm sorry to say that worse things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
because we have, there's no training. You know, uh, many, many parents today uh, uh, push their family uh, uh, expectations over their children to the teachers, you know, and from teachers, they, 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 will, they will return and they house helps. You know, everybody is pursuing career, one way or the other, trying to find things done. At the end of the day, you return, you get monsters as children. You don't know them, they don't know you. You know, during long vacation that you should be around to monitor how they're doing, we go for summer uh, education. You know, everybody doesn't want the trouble. You want children, but you don't want their trouble. You see, you want rain, but you don't want the clap of thunder. How do you manage such? You know, some of us, when we were, brought, we were, we were, we were born and brought up, <laughs> our parents, like my mom, my father, was a civil, uh, my father was a civil servant. He refused that my mother should do serious business. He was taking care of us until almost all of us entered uh, uh, colleges and all that, before she started her trade and all, all this is to support the family. That's the wisdom, you know, and all of us were properly taken care of. You know, and when I see children who, are not, who didn't have the opportunity I had, I, I have pity for them. You know, I don't just go into judgment, judge them that are terrible, bad people. I don't judge them. You know, I look at their circumstances. If these people had gone through this uh, level that I went through, will these people turn out to be this way? The answer is no. So this is, we have to go back and, you know, and look inward. This is part of the trouble. So we have not prepared ourselves. You know, if you go, to, go to secondary schools you have everywhere. Go to universities and see the young ladies and young men who are there. Well, are they actually prepared? How serious are they with their God? You know, how, how serious? Because if you must bring up children, you must have the fear of God. If you don't have that children of, uh, the fear of God, you can't bring good uh, people up. So how are we doing about that? We are concerned about other things. The, the issue that is fundamental is not uh, considered. So that's the outcome. Greed, no contentment. You know, people are not contented with what they have. People who have a, a, a mosaic want to have a, a, a kekena pep. People who have a kekena pep want to have a, a, a Mercedes. Uh, have a, a Mercedes. People who have a two want three. People continue this, you know, a sensational lifestyle. And then we are watching all these uh, serious uh, movies that are, are not uh, 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 censored. You know, all this is uh, exposed children to all sorts of uh, uh, things. People are looking for wealth all uh, without to uh, work. People want to get rich quick. That's attitude. Nobody wants to go through the processes, you know, of moving from one level of uh, uh, success to another. No, so this is the outcome. So the outcome, everybody wants people, people are kidnapping. Many people, teachers, uh, uh, fin, even people, children, are feeling that they are kidnapped and say that they are kidnapped and ask you what to do. We have had such stories everywhere. People, students who kidnap themselves, you know, and relations and friends and all this, and uh, the people who work with people who come tomorrow, before you know it, they will kidnap your children and want to get money out of you. So this is a, a rotten society. Things have gone bad. You know, we really have to, not, we're not saying that we don't have enough uh, mosques or most churches and all this and that. The thing is, are you serious with what we're doing? Are you just mounting it for the sake of mounting it or not? What people, what children learn is what you do. It's not what you say. And that is the trouble here. You know, you continue preaching. It, your children, no matter how you, you want to provide for them, tell them stories. They're not, they're not going to take what you are telling them. What they will take is what you are doing. You know, how are you living your life? That is the best way to... You know, to impress on these people to behave well. So the, the, the teacher that is behaving, go and ask the other teacher, how did, who brought him up? How, what circumstances did he grow up in, in the society? Broken homes are everywhere. Everybody now wants uh, freedom. Nobody wants to be under anybody. Everybody wants to be free and all, uh, to just do anything the person likes. How are they, what are the consequences? on the children that are coming from broken homes. You know, nobody wants to take any blames again. If you were any husband, they will just say, no, 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 I don't want it. I can be on my own. You have my... Day. 
what is the, you, if you want to be on your own, what is the consequence for those children you are having? So these are the issues we are going to look at and consider before you get back. If not, I'm sorry, it's going to be worse. For this clergy, Pastor Gerald Ogbolu, while blaming parents for negligence, said there is need for government to provide good leadership and governance, saying this is why youths resort to internet fraud and ritual killings to get rich quick. So many people are running around here with big cars that they can't even explain where they got the money from. Nobody is asking them questions. When they get home, they are celebrated. Others now see themselves as being lazy. And by the time they mix up with their group or their, with, like, say, their peer group, they get negative advices. They get negative um, instructions. So I, I don't know how to put it. You'll find out that they, 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 nobody is really telling them the right thing to do. And nobody is asking questions. The society is corrupt. The society, they, we need an overhaul. The youths of these days, majority of them don't even want to work. They feel they can just get that money, it will fall from the sky. It does not. People have to work for, for their living, for whatever they earn. I wouldn't really blame the government that much, but in a way I will too. In the sense that the, the government were not doing enough. I think we need more industry. We need to get them more engaged. The idle mind is the devil's workshop. Most of these children, they come out from school, we have so many graduates everywhere, and they don't have jobs. I think some of the money that's being shipped overseas, they should concentrate on setting up industries here in Nigeria, giving them a sense of belonging. The other day, I had this notion, God was talking to me, that I should start praying for, for suicidal people, that there's a lot of people with suicidal tendencies. And what's the, what's the, what, what leads to suicide? Is it not depression? People are depressed. In, in, in most cases, it's not even just greed. <clears throat> in most cases, it's just trying, some of them are trying to get out of poverty. They don't know the right way to go. Nobody's pointing in the right direction. And that's where I blame some of the, re the religious leaders. Because if the religious leaders can actually do their homework, You'll find out that people will have a sense of living, a sense of belonging. They will know that there is still hope, that they can still be somebody in this life, that there is a God that really cares for them, that loves them. And he says that he delights in their prosperity. On Nigeria's rating in the 2021 Corruption Perceptions Index, CPI, according to Transparency International, Nigeria scored 24 out of 100 points in the 2021 index. Nigeria's current 154 ranking out of 180 countries in the 2021 Corruption Perception Index is a drop of 149 in the 2020 index. Listen to what my guests have to say. You see, the, the, the Corruption Perception Index that uh, they reeled out uh, about two days or so now, yes, you know, that is uh, making waves around the country is, you know, when you have a dysfunctional system that is working, it's going to come up with a lot of things. Uh, the other things are linked up to what we are saying here. You know, yes, we are in government. I've said it here, time and time, but I've brought even motion uh, to, uh, to in the, uh, the, uh, during the twilight of the Eighth Assembly. I came up with a motion here. You know, around the, that's around the April, around April of 20. Uh, 20, uh, 2019, you know, and uh, said the consequences of uh, not providing employment for our people. I talked about that if we don't do it, that it's going to reach a level that we are going to have a revolution in this country. Many people cry and say that uh, the author is uh, looking for trouble, and say all this. I, I say, uh, and I told them, you, uh, uh, that uh, you people are not looking further than uh, you should be doing. Today, what is the situation? All those things I said, are they not happening? You see, a, a country that provides so much, much money for the consequences of, the, of, the, of uh, not doing the right thing that should be done, will always be beating about the bush. You know, you see, go and check 
the, 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 the budget for the defense in this country. Go and check about it. How, and go and counterbalance it with the budget for education, budget it for job creation and all that. Where do you stand? So we are making, giving more money to go and protect the, uh, to, uh, to go and protect the society against our uh, things we couldn't do for, uh, do, for, uh, do for ourselves. If we create jobs and these people are doing things for themselves, how many of them will be there? We know we are going to have habitual criminals. They are everywhere. But at least majority, the one that will not use unemployment as any school to get into will be out of them. You know, so this is the, uh, the situation here. And I say that you have to, at the, at the heart of everything we are doing here is job creation. And if you don't do that, you are wasting time. The universities are there, both the federal and private universities, every year pushing out uh, students, uh, uh, graduates out in the society, and you don't have job for these people. And I said, yes, government cannot provide all the job, but there must be the, the, the private sector will be encouraged to do that. If the private sector is going to have electricity, you are going to buy gas. How will you employ? What, how many people are you going to, which kind of business are you going to do using diesel? And you know the, the cost of diesel today in the country. So many people are closing up here. And most, most of our uh, the, uh, the employment, uh, uh, employment creating uh, 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 establishments are uh, uh, taking flight out of Nigeria, going to neighboring countries, not far. They're going to Ghana. They're going to small other countries around us here. Because you go there, you have steady source of energy. But in this place, we are still having it as a problem. I brought such a, that motion, a bill of, on the power needs of this country. I also brought because I looked at it. Instead of complaining, I find solution. So I went out and they, they looked for consultants. By the time I got, gathered all the information about the problem, the energy needs of this country, I came with a motion here. You know, that made, that compelled the National Assembly to have a, 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 a workshop. It's at NAF Center on how to provide energy for the country, with a Swiss one as a chairman. They did all that, and he brought a bill last, uh, last year as a consequence of that, my motion. You know, so this is the, what we do here. We look at a problem, we try to find solution. It's not just a new coming with motions and then talking about the problem without any. I, don't, I go a step further. So I have done all those things, and not until we get the solution to the energy needs of this country. That's the only way you can have a level playing ground for businesses to thrive. If you don't make it impossible for them to be, they have, the job will, will all be taking their flights out of this country. So this is, if you, when you check all these institutions, they are all interchanged. They are all linked to, uh, together. You know, so let us, because if we have jobs, uh, have, a, uh, uh, have a, uh, businesses growing in this country, there will be employment. Many people will out of a job. And then crimes will go down. The defense, the, defense, the, the, the military and the force that are spending so much money will not be spending such money. But if we don't do, many people are joining Boko Haram. Unemployed people who have nothing to do, in, they will just go in there. You know, they are not educated. You didn't uh, educate them. You didn't uh, train them well. They have just, uh, they move into the, the, what they know next and all that. So this country will have, but it's, it's, for me, it's already late in the day. This is agenda for the new incoming administration. And the, we're in the process of uh, job, uh, 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 leadership recruitment, which 2023 uh, 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 has answered uh, answer for. What will Nigeria be looking for? Who and who are they looking for to be to position as a president? Are we looking at primordial considerations? Are we still going to go and look at religion? Are we still going to look at ethnicity? Are we still going to look at our a business relationship, or looking for somebody who has answer, magic one, whether he's a, a politician or not, hire the services of such a person and bring the person to do the job. Obama was not, uh, Obama is a, an immigrant, he's an he's a African American of Kenyan descent. America will swallow their pride to take an African to get over there because the man has idea of what he's going to do. And he took them out of uh, uh, the, the, the trouble they had uh, 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 during the presidency of uh, uh, Bush. You know, he did a lot of this. So what will be Nigeria doing? Are we just going to recycle and get the same old story again to get things done here? Because you feel that your interest is protected. The interest Nigerians and politicians should be looking at is the interest of the society here. 
before we have an implosion. If we don't do it, we have an implosion. Somebody must find solution. You know, what this, where we are and where we find ourselves is, in fact, is a crying need that we have to do a lot of things to look for people. Whether the person is in a PC or is in a PDP is not the issue. Let us look for people who has the capacity to do the job, who can reason and see how he can, uh, under time frames, that he's going to give to himself, do something. But not just we we'll stay here today, we we'll say today we have this problem, uh, people, the NLC will uh, rise up in arms, uh, they will say drop it for the now, uh, now. tomorrow another one will come, they will, uh, the students want to go a riot, you say okay, we are going to concede to you this one, but allow us for some time. It's not going to work. You know, it won't work for this country. You know, we have to look at, take care, you know, swallow our, uh, our pride. We have to sit up and get things done. Is that's just the only thing that can happen in this country. If we do that, you know, we will be headway for this country. The first thing I will say is lack of patriotism. Because if you love your country, you take it as a family unit. It's like you have the, your country kind of represents the family unit where you have the dad, the mom, and the kids. Okay, if you want what is good for your family, then you should also want what is good for your country. The same way you plan for your family and go as far as to bastardize some of the uh, public offices that's given to you just because you want to improve the well-being of your family. You should have the same equal love that you have for your family, for the country. And wherever you find yourself, you don't see it, you don't personalize it, you don't try to um, kind of take on due advantage of the office or the seat. The truth of the matter is that Nigeria as a country, we need to change our mindset. We need to put the country first before self. Just like the Americans will say, they will say, think not what your country can do for you, but think of what you can do for your country. For as long as we don't have that mentality to be difficult for us to tackle corruption in this country, we need to love this country. We need to love Nigeria. We should put Nigeria first in all that we do. Okay. Okay, uh, the truth of the matter is that you cannot actually have an accurate statistics of uh, the corruption index, whether it is local or international. Uh, just Nigeria is not the only corrupt country. And that's where the government is looking at it from. It's not as if the government is trying to encourage corruption or maybe they're not facing the reality of it. No. The, the fact is that um, for the government to be able to tackle this, I think we shouldn't really concentrate on the adults. I think we should go back to the drawing board. I think we should face the, the children coming up because the future of the country depends on them. It's going to, at the end of the day, we're going to hand over to them. So I think in fighting this war of uh, corruption, I think we should go back home and start from our family, like I always say, in schools and other uh, institutions of learning. I think those agencies ought, ought to actually be strengthened more. Uh, because um, if you've lived abroad, you find out that the, um, you have the, um, uh, what they call them in the U.S., is it, um, is it R, R, something? They call themselves like this Internal Revenue Service, you know. They, 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 they are really the people that everybody's scared of. Everybody in authority, they're scared of them, even the FBI, you know. So I think those agencies should be strengthened, the, um, the EFCC and other agencies that fight corruption. Well, from your wealth of experience, uh, having lived outside the country for a very long time, uh, these agencies you're talking about, what in particular, or what are the key things you think about these agencies that needs to be, you know, put in place for the EFCCs and others so that governments, they can be independent and government agencies, like you said, or citizens can be aware that such agency can not just bark but can bite. Well, number one, they need more manpower. They need to 
more hands needs to be on deck. They need more manpower. They need uh, more financial independence uh, so that uh, they can easily be intimidated. They also need um, legislative and judicial independence. They should be able to uh, walk into uh, a government office, no matter how high the office may be. They should be able to interrogate, investigate, and even sometimes make arrests. You see some countries where even the highest of, of persons in those countries, they, 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 they are arrested, you know, when they, are, when they default. It's either they know that they'll be arrested and you find some of them, they just outright resign, you know, to save themselves of the embarrassment. So, like the agencies I was talking about, yes, they need a lot of funding. They need more manpower. We have too many youths lottering out there doing nothing. As most of them are very, very intelligent. They need to more of this, the ICT, and um, uh, we have so many of them that are intelligent. They need to be empowered. They need to put them into such. They'll be trained and put into all those um, agencies. All right, uh, before we talk about other issues, again, the country, let's look at the role of uh, religious leaders, civil society organizations, uh, and the schools. Uh, what role do you think they can play to strengthen Nigeria's fight against corruption? They can do a lot. They say charity begins at home. They can do a lot. The schools, the churches, the mosques, all religious. In fact, the Bible makes it clear that the, the word of God is meant for reproof, for correction. There is no scripture, whether it is in the Quran or in the Bible, that will encourage you to steal or kill or destroy. Everything points to a righteous living and a righteous way of life. So can we say our religious or uh, yes, religious leaders have been compromised? That's why their impact is not bad. I think they're missing the point. It's not even a question of compromise. Nobody they're not being compromised and they're not even i'm not going to say they're compromising i would say that they're just missing the point because if they know the essence of the doctrine or whatever they're teaching they will know that is to make a better society so it's not a question of because we say oh we have pastors the prosperity preachers and the rest of it oh yes god loves his children to do well but he also wants them to do right he wants them to do it the, get there the right way. So uh, when it comes, when we, yes, they, in a way they are compromising the scriptures. They are compromising uh, whatever text that is contained in whatever book that they are reading. In that area, yes, I would say they're compromising. Because if they are to actually dish it out the way it is, um, it is written, a lot of people don't want to hear the truth. So you find out that a lot of them will end up saying, oh, I don't want to offend my members, so because of that, I'm going to avoid talking this, or I'm going to avoid saying that, so that they will not get offended. But are you there to please man or please God, the one that sent you? So I think they, are, they need to really strengthen up and do the right thing. Well, that has been my package for this week. Join me again same time next week for another edition of the program. Bye.